Hello. Welcome back. The identification of pathology begins with assessment. That's the opening um, contact with the client is in the assessment process. Assessment then leads to diagnosis. Diagnosis then guides treatment. So assessment is the critical area where we develop our case conceptualization and begin to move into the diagno diagnosis. The, um, and there's two forms of the diagnosis. You're aware of the categorical diagnoses um, for like DSM kinds of categories. And then the causal diagnosis that we work with as clinical psychologists or as family therapists. What's causing the pathology? So what's the, the categorical diagnosis within the DSM, but also what's the clinical diagnosis as to the cause of the pathology? And our assessment process, particularly our initial assessment process. Now, the initial assessment process can spread across many sessions, so we can have four or six sessions of assessment. But that initial assessment is then what provides the information that we then organize into the diagnosis, both categorical and causal, that then guide our treatment uh, plan down the road. And so our treatment plan is going to be formulated based on the diagnosis that is developed from the initial assessment and the information in the initial assessment. So everything begins with the initial assessment. The initial assessment begins, the very first thing about the initial assessment is the presenting problem. What type of pathology are we looking at? What's the presenting problem? What's the chief complaint that we we're looking at in any particular type of thing. Is it in the ADHD zone? Is it in the autism zone? Is it um, you know, schizophrenia? What, what, what are we looking at? What's the presenting problem? The, um, in this type of pathology, the pathology I want to discuss today, the presenting problem is a child's rejection of a parent surrounding divorce child's rejection of a parent surrounding divorce. That's our presenting problem. So that's our broad category that we start with. A child rejecting a parent is an attachment pathology. The attachment system is the brain system for love and bonding throughout the lifespan. Neurologically embedded primary motivational system, the attachment system. A, the attachment system motivates that child parent bond. That's what it's designed to do. That's the brain system for motivating that parent-child bond. If I have a breach in that parent-child bond, a child rejecting a parent, that's an attachment-related pathology. That's some problem in the attachment system. So just off of just the presenting problem, I know I'm looking at an attachment-related pathology. All the whole realm of attachment theory, attachment system, all the research we have about that comes to play. Surrounding divorce, that's interesting. So it's not an attachment-related pathology of early childhood. We're not looking at reactive attachment disorder or any of the attachment problems of early childhood. We're looking at an attachment-related pathology that emerged surrounding divorce. Got to think family systems off of this. Got to, there's... We'll open up family systems later, but just off of that, surrounding divorce, there's something family going on here. There's some sort of family systems. So that's our opening category for the initial size, presenting problem. The next phase, we're going to go through a process of differential diagnosis, where we are going to put everything on the table and then move in directions. We're going to acquire information that will rule out certain alternatives and support other alternatives. And, and we are systematically going to go through in the process of differential diagnosis, ruling out some and supporting other explanations until we are left with one causal explanation, one diagnostic explanation that accounts for the data. All the others have been ruled out. That's the process of differential diagnosis. I don't care where it leads. It doesn't matter 
I don't care if I wind up in autism. I don't care if I wind up in ADHD. I don't care. I don't care where it leads. That's the nature of differential diagnosis. I'm not looking for something. I'm diagnosing the pathology. So we start with everything on the table. It could be anything. Oh, a child rejecting a parent surrounding divorce. Okay, we're in the domain of attachment pathology. It's not in the domain of schizophrenia. It's not in the domain of bipolar. They may emerge again, those other issues. But this is not the primary issue that's presenting itself, the presenting problem. The presenting problem is an attachment-related pathology, possible family systems overtones. So the next step, the next phase of the assessment is to collect the symptom information. What's the symptom information that we are going to use to then begin to differentially diagnose what's causing those sets of symptoms? With this attachment-related pathology, we essentially have three sets of symptoms, three symptom sets. The first one has to do with the oppositional, angry kind of family conflict going on between the child and the targeted parent. There's all sorts of conflict, hostility, negativity, angry stuff going on. So we have this angry, hostile conflict set of symptoms. The next set of symptoms are the the attachment systems. We have a child who is seeking to terminate the child's relationship with the parent. Attachment set of symptoms. That's really weird. There's, uh, my background is attachment. If you look at my resume, um, it's got like the uh, circle of security and watch, wait, and wonder, and um, you know, certification early child attachment stuff. I know it. The attachment system, and I've worked with the attachment system in. Um, foster care. So I know what trauma does to the attachment system. A child rejecting a parent is a very unusual, very aberrant display of, of the attachment system. We never, ever, ever see a child rejecting a parent. Why? Because children who rejected parents were eaten by predators. I mean, that's just not the way the attachment system works. There's only one case one type of pathology that produces the, uh, the child rejecting the parent, and that's sex abuse, incest. Incest, you immediately see uh, the child rejecting the parent. You might see it in, in um, chronic and severe violent parenting, uh, either hostile, aggressive, verbally, emotionally kind of, or, or you know, electrical cords and, and cigarette burns, and it just is a really hostile, aggressive, violent parenting over a prolonged period can create the, where the child um, rejects a parent. Um, but it takes a lot of pounding to be able to do that because the attachment system is so strong, it's designed to protect us from predators. So even a bad parent is better than a good predator. Um, and so bad parenting produces what's called insecure attachment. You know, talk about that in a little bit. So that that idea that we have a child rejecting a parent, that's really unusual. Well, you know what? That's also um, Murray Bowen's idea, the emotional cutoff in family systems kind of stuff. The emotional cutoff. So there I got another family system strain off of this. Um, so we have the, the second set of symptoms, the attachment-related symptoms. The third set of symptoms, don't always see it, but frequently enough that we'll put it on the, the chart here, is the anxiety symptoms. A severe, excessive child anxiety about being with the targeted, rejected parent. Um, it might rise to the level of panic attacks, uh, just a child thinking about being with that parent becomes so stressful and they go into this anxiety. So we have this whole set of anxiety symptoms, so hostile, aggressive symptoms, attachment systems and these anxiety symptoms. We essentially have these three symptom sets. Attachment-related pathology, three symptom sets. Now what we're going to do in the next series of videos is I'm going to take a look at each one of these symptom sets. We're going to unpack one, we're going to unpack the angry aggressive ones and we're going to go through it and look at that, those symptoms and what do they mean and, and, and diagnose what those symptoms are, what the causal uh, source for those symptoms are. Then we're going to do the same thing with the attachment systems and we're going to do the same thing with uh, anxiety symptoms. 
And we're going to reach that diagnostic core of what are we looking at with this type of pathology. Um, and so follow me along. Uh, we'll meet over at the next video, and I'll start to unpack uh, these symptom domains.